ships, planes, trucks and trains. Every year they are used to take more than 20 million consignments of radioactive material to destinations all over the world. Places where it is urgently needed. For generating power, for diagnostic and therapeutic uses in medicine, in industry, research, manufacturing, agriculture, minerals exploration and in and around our homes. Radioactive material makes our lives easier, better, safer and healthier. The movement of radioactive material has an excellent safety record. That's because of the care taken by those sending the packages, the carriers delivering them, the package recipients and the stringent regulation provided both at the global level by the International Atomic Energy Agency and nationally by member states. This is one of a series of short videos produced by the IAEA about the essential aspects of the safe transport of radioactive material. It's about the nature and characteristics of radiation itself in the context of the safe transport of radioactive material. When I think of radiation, I think of particles that move through the environment, usually at high speed, that can potentially be harmful to people. In order to um, make sure that these particles do not harm people in the, in the course of transport, packages need to have what's called shielding, and that prevents the particles from getting out of the package and harming people that are in close proximity to the packages. Ionizing radiation is radiation that carries enough energy to free electrons from atoms or molecules, thereby ionizing them. It is a naturally occurring phenomenon to which everyone is exposed from sources like cosmic rays and naturally occurring terrestrial radioactive material found in, amongst other things, coal, thorium and uranium. The population is also exposed to artificial sources of radiation, most importantly in medicine. The extent to which shielding is necessary to protect people and the environment from this energy depends on three things. The type or sort of activity of the material, whether it emits alpha, beta or gamma radiation. The level of activity of the material and the ability of particles emitted from the material to penetrate other materials, particularly those which might be used to package it for safe transport. Alpha, beta and gamma radiation display quite different characteristics from each other, and they need to be treated quite differently when packaging radioactive material for safe transport. Plutonium is an alpha emitter used within the power systems of some spacecraft. It shows a high level of activity when held up close to a detector like a Geiger Muller tube. But as the source is moved away, the alpha particles collide with air particles, lose their kinetic energy and cease to be ionizing at the face of the detector. Just introducing a piece of paper is enough to absorb alpha radiation and stop the particles reaching the detector. Americium-241 also emits alpha radiation. It's best known for its use in smoke detectors, like those found in homes throughout the world. Contained in a small plastic shield, the tiny alpha emitter can be held right up close to the detector with no perceptible increase in activity. So typically, dense and heavy shielding is not necessary to protect cargo handlers and the public from alpha emitters, although the level of activity also has to be taken into account when deciding on the appropriate package. Strontium is a beta emitter, Held up close to the detector, the activity level is high. But as the source is withdrawn, the level at the detector face reduces. These beta particles can easily pass through paper, 
but if you put a 2.5mm metal plate in the way, the activity level reduces dramatically on the other side of the plate. This too has implications for the sort of shielding necessary for the safe transport of beta emitters. Gamma radiation is in widespread use throughout the world for industrial radiography, medicine and the production of nuclear energy. This radium source emits all three types of radiation. It's used in medicine for cancer therapy. By introducing this aluminium plate, radium's alpha and beta particles are stopped. But aluminium has no effect on gamma particles. They carry much more energy than alpha or beta rays and they pass straight through the metal. At 30 centimeters from the detector, the activity remains high. Shield with an 11 millimeter lead plate and even at 6 centimeters, the activity is greatly reduced because lead is a much more dense metal than aluminium. Add another lead plate and hardly any gamma particles reach the detector. So for sources like this one, very dense, heavy packaging is used to protect cargo handlers and the public from radiation. This projector is used in industrial radiography, where the ability of the gamma particles to penetrate metal and thus reveal a flaw in the pipe's metallurgical integrity is essential. Shielding material needs to be very dense, and a good example of that is lead. So lead is often used in shielding, and that's what makes some of these packages fairly heavy. The lead shielding is a dense material that prevents the particles that we talked about earlier from getting out of the package and potentially being harmful to those that are handling the package or that are in close proximity to the package when it's being transported. So to protect people from the hazards of radioactive materials when they're on the move, the packaging is designed in accordance with the type of radiation concerned the level of its activity and its penetrating power. To find out more about the safe transport of radioactive material, visit our website at goto.iaea.org forward slash transport safety. It's also worth looking at the nine companion films in this series. Together, they're a great introduction to the hows, whys and wherefores of the transport of these vital goods.